So what's the problem? Well, uh, I think the Ethiopian government has recognized that natural resources are at the core of, of productive agriculture. And as a result, there are very ambitious targets for uh, natural resource management interventions. And those targets find their way into national plans, such as the current uh, growth and transformation plan. But then what happens is those targets are disaggregated down through administrative structures until they arrive at, at Warada level, the lowest administrative structure. And then local government officials are then responsible for delivering on those targets. So NRM interventions become about meeting targets uh, more than about the effectiveness of those interventions. There's a lot of talk of participation in the policy documents and in the manuals, but from our uh, experience at grassroots level, there's very little decision-making, real decision-making at grassroots level. And so NRM interventions become about meeting targets, and sometimes those are misplaced, ponds, bunds, terraces. The, the local government officials are keen to meet the quotas, but often those structures end up in the wrong places in terms of agroecology and in terms of social niches. So what needs to change? Well, from our diagnosis in the, in the Blue Nile Basin of Ethiopia, we see that there needs to be more connection between different sectors, so between water, between agriculture, between livestock, and more dialogue between local government officials and communities to redress this power imbalance, to move away from campaigns to a more participatory approach to rainwater management. That all sounds very utopian. How are we going to achieve that? Well, one small way that we're experimenting with in the Blue Nile Basin of Ethiopia is the use of what we call local innovation platforms. We have some very positive experiences from previous projects in using these innovation platforms. Those are spaces for different actors to come together and engage in dialogue. So it might be actors from the research sector, from NGOs, from local government, from extension, from the communities themselves. And the idea is that those actors engage in a dialogue and they jointly identify some of the key issues and jointly move forward with some solutions. We hope through that approach to demonstrate some pockets of success where rainwater management is conducted in a more participat participatory and cross-sectoral way. And then to connect that with what's happening at national level. We already have some good uh, engagement at national level through a national platform that's been established. So if we can demonstrate success, connect that to national initiatives, then we feel that this could have potential for having a transformative effect on natural resource management and hence productivity in Ethiopian landscapes. I sometimes drive a work car, and I'm vaguely aware of the need to service the car when it needs to be serviced, whether there's oil in the engine, whether there's water in the radiator. But I have a very different approach when I drive my own car. I know exactly when it needs to be serviced. And if I go on a journey, then I make sure that the tires are at the correct pressure and that there's water in the radiator. And I think that issue of ownership is key to successful rainwater management interventions. Those which are owned by local people are likely to succeed and to be sustained. Those that are owned or perceived to be owned by other people are likely to fall into disrepair. Ethiopia is sometimes described as the water tower of Africa, but I think with the new approaches based on community participation, Ethiopia could become the breadbasket of Africa. Thank you.